Hey everyone, welcome to another great episode on the Asian Hustle Network podcast. Today we have Michelle Chen and Jing Zhang. They are the co CEOs of Simply Co, and they're located in Houston, Texas. Welcome to the show, guys. Hi, thank you for having us. I'm so excited to hear both your stories. And for our listeners, they are currently juniors in high school, which is extremely remarkable. So let's hop into the first question. Uh, we'll start with Michelle. What is Simply Co? So Simply Co is like a high school company under the Junior Achievement Entrepreneurship Program. And our mission really is to find sustainable alternatives to everyday products that um, that we use you know, daily in our everyday lives. Um, We had started this company under the idea that our mentor, Tanya, actually kind of brought this idea of sustainability to us and sustainable products. And from there, we kind of took this inspiration and we were thinking, you know, as high schoolers, we could make a greater impact in our community in a variety of ways. One of the ways we wanted to do it is to address this sort of climate change aspect and to address kind of what our generation can help do in little ways to make bigger impacts towards that issue. And so Simply Co is geared around that, it's geared around giving high schoolers opportunities to learn what it's like being in a business, running in a business. Um, it's also kind of getting an idea of what we want to do in the future as well, considering many people who've been in this program don't always end up being entrepreneurs, but that's okay. You know, it's all about broadening their scopes and seeing what they're also capable of and expanding what ideas they have. That's amazing. Let's hear from your side, Jing. Um, so definitely what Michelle said, I think it's also on a broader spectrum, trying to just give high schoolers experience with hands on business. I think it's kind of one of the only clubs where you can actually run a real life business and deal with the marketing and the sales finance aspect, everything. And I definitely think that Simply Co in particular, we're kind of centered on sustainability. So all the past products and any future products that we decide to do, they're all kind of centered on this idea of having to change the planet and kind of wanting to to make an impact even as high schoolers and contribute to sustainability and helping the earth. And even because it's such a prominent subject given climate change, I definitely think that um, each year we try to really center our product around the idea of sustainability. I like it. I feel like sustainability right now is such a huge topic, right? Because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. maybe it's my own opinion, but I think we're starting to feel effects of it around the world. There's more hurricanes, there's more tornadoes. And as you guys are not, you guys know, Hurricane Harvey a couple of years ago in Houston yeah. was was a big deal, right? And I'm kind of curious, like what led up to this inspiration of Simply Co? And the second question I have regarding that is, what's it like having a co-CEO, right? <laughs> I, would, I would imagine <laughs> there, there's a lot, of, a lot of moving parts to any company that you, that you guys start or are working together. So first question, Jing, what was the inspiration behind Simply Co? Um, I think the inspiration actually we're kind of like a legacy company so um last year's heads um they kind of started this as kind of a high schooler's dream of being able to make an impact i feel like every um teen and also young adult just kind of wants to make their mark and so they started as the hopes of being able to kind of sell these food clips to reduce food waste in in their um uh, in their center um community and kind of things like that and then from there kind of just grew and so we're carrying on the legacy this year as co-ceos of continuing to build sustainability and kind of introducing products like tote bags which are kind of really trendy right now and they're like an easy way to reduce plastic waste and also be able to incorporate sustainability into your lifestyle that's amazing and michelle was it like having a co-ceo it's like walk me honest- through the nuances <laughs> well it's not to say that the road suddenly becomes easier once you have a partner with you but it is a lot more i'd say gratifying because a ceo is kind of like you imagine the CEO and you think like president, you think like top dog, you know, the person up there that's making all the decisions, but there's a lot of behind the scenes work that comes into getting that decision in the first place, working with people around you, trying to organize everything. And sometimes it's hard to strike a balance. And I think that's maybe one of the big things that being a CEO, being somebody who starts something, that's something that's a, a pivotal struggle is always trying to find a balance. And with a co-CEO, especially with Jing, um, it's just amazing to have somebody to bounce ideas off, working like on an equal platform as well, and being able to accept like constructive criticism, but also know that this is the person that's going to have your back. This is the person that's going to, you know, that the two of you are responsible for 
a huge and really awesome experience. And you're both kind of piggybacking off each other. And it's just, uh, there's, yeah. uh, there's hard times, there's struggles for sure. And, but it's easier to weather through when you have somebody that you can trust and somebody that, you know, isn't saying something to just go along with it, but will step in and will um, help build, but also help guide you as well. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think, sorry, I was gonna say I definitely think in the beginning it's kind of hard to like balance work between two people because you kind of just want to um do stuff on your own. But I definitely think having Cosio is like beneficial because it's someone who gets you because I feel like they understand how much you're trying to do and it's someone who is as in it as you are and it's just someone that like it will be your ride or die despite whatever happens. I hope you guys never lose that mentality, right? I know that. <laughs> You know, I know that this is uh, relatively new for you guys and you guys are pretty young, but that goes a long way, right? And crazy, the crazy thing is like you, the things you learn now, the things you're saying right now, I hope you re-listen to this podcast like five, six, seven years from now as you're starting your real like real world like business ventures, mm-hmm. right? Because you realize that a lot of things you're saying is still very, very true in the real world. Like it's mm-hmm. so... It's so necessary to have a co-founder or co-CEO or whatever it is that you're working with because it gets really hard. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, Definitely. like your problems never really go away at all. It always stays. And I, I know that there's a lot of glory of like, oh, being the top person, being CEO. Mm-hmm. Being a CEO myself for the last couple of years, I can honestly say this is my least favorite position. <laughs> So, so shout out to you guys to, to making it look so easy, right? And I want to ask questions about how do you develop your leadership abilities to take on this position, right? Was there something that your parents sort of helped you groom as you were growing up or an internal desire to become a leader? Like, I, want, I just want to understand, like, how are you, how are you guys, become, how are you guys becoming the person that you are today? And yeah, Jane, do you want to start it off? Start us okay. off, Jane? Yeah, sure. So um, when I was little, I think this is diving a bit deep. When I was little, I had cancer. And I feel like that was a very big moment in my life. And after that, you know, I was very thankful to make a recovery. And I think that made a big impact on shaping me as who I am because I became a lot more extroverted because I realized, you know, kind of life is short and I really want to do something impactful. And I think as I grew up, I became really wanting of, to be like a leader. I want to be someone who would like, really stand up for what I believed in and I think that kind of um, expedited my growth as becoming kind of a leader position in many ways I feel like my parents were very supportive of it but I think with my own internal um, desire and also kind of being able to be in situations where I can be kind of in charge has helped me foster these skills and I feel like it's helped me become um with this mindset because I feel like I've always wanted to be kind of a leader and want to make a big change I feel like that's kind of just grown as I've grown older wow that's a that's a really touching story and I could I could feel that already that desire to do more right yeah. and I'm, I'm I'm so glad that you know you overcome cancer and you're still here with us today thank you thank you <laughs> go ahead Michelle um, as for me, my story, um, I think my story really starts with my immigrant parents because they moved from Taiwan to Hawaii, actually. I was raised on Hawaii for about 12 years and they had started their own like business right from the ground up, like no money, no support, nothing, just started it. And they made like this food truck and this food truck was really popular. And every day after school, my dad would pick me up from school, take me there. I'd be like cleaning tables. I'd be like playing with the customers sometimes. And it's just uh, the idea of a small business has always been in my family. Like even moving to Texas, they started a restaurant from the ground up as well with a little bit more support. And I'm still there working, but this time I'm getting paid. So that's great. Um, And I don't know, my my Asian parents, like I kind of relate to you in the sense that they did want me to grow up into Mm -hmm. kind of being like, you know, a doctor, a lawyer, like they opened all these pathways to me. But I really did appreciate this kind of change in mentality where they're no longer pushing pushing you towards these paths they're like you know if you want to be you know someone who starts their business from the ground up like we did like I support you I will help you there and that's really helped in pushing me towards things like business related because I've always seen them work hard and get their own fruitfulness from it and I've also wanted to experience the same feelings that they did with their support as well I love it. I love it a lot. It's so inspirational to hear both your perspectives and the reason why you you guys are so highly motivated, right? I can't, (laughs) 
I don't remember myself being as motivated when I was a high school junior <laughs> per se, but it just reminds me of a story of uh, going, going back to what you said, Michelle, like, so I'm, I'm a little bit older. So I, I worked, so in my career, I worked as a software engineer for about 10 years. Ooh. Oh. And then I quit my job to become an entrepreneur. And mm-hmm. I remember my parents didn't talk to me for like five months. Right? Oh my God. That's a big and jump. That's a big jump. Yeah, because their mentality is we work so hard for you guys. We sacrifice so much for you guys. And you're just going to throw it all away. Mm-hmm. Right. But the yeah. thing with Asian parents is that as long as their kid is one happy and two making money that's the most important thing (laughs) (laughs) as long as you can demonstrate to them that you can be self-sustainable that's really all they care about right at the end of the day they want you to be happy right i definitely yeah i definitely think that i think there has been a bit of a change mentality i feel like they just gently push you towards like the stereotypical doctor lawyer stuff these days i feel like um my parents and like i feel like a lot of parents asian parents now they're kind of more accepting of the world how they are these more new jobs that are coming out and that i think what you said like as long as their kid is like living a good life and happy i feel like they're not as critical as past generations have been and i think the root of it is just that you know as immigrants uh, my parents they really wanted like their kids to be happy and not have to suffer i feel like they think they have this mentality like you know these standard jobs are the ways to go and like engineer like you'll always be needed and like like there's no like job insecurity i feel like now they realize kind of i think they've become more open in these past past few years about how there's like entrepreneur jobs and things that are like business related that are also booming and that are like are really kind of not that like standard but also are really good options and that they're more encouraging towards like following dreams like that i love it i love it it's so different from how my parents were <laughs> <laughs> you have to go harvard you have to go to stanford <laughs> yeah, kind of like that too yeah get into that ivy league school <laughs> But yeah, I'm going to ask you guys a really hard question. So what do you think is the key to success? And let's hear from Michelle first. I think the key to success is surrounding yourself with the right people. And I'm not talking the right people like the people who get straight A's all the time or the people that have similar backgrounds to you or the people that you grew up with. I'm talking about the people that are like the same mind as you, the same motivations maybe, or the same drive to like achieve something greater and surrounding yourself with those type of people can help motivate you to be better because you're kind of like competitive. Our high school is pretty competitive in our region. And so you can't really find that. um, You can't really find any quite the same experience anywhere else in the sense that you're constantly pushing yourself, but you're also building each other up Mm -hmm. it's not tearing each other down type of mentality and having that mentality makes jobs and makes doing things like building a business from the ground up or you know leading these entrepreneurship businesses very more fulfilling I would say because it doesn't feel like a job anymore it feels like people working together towards a greater goal so surrounding yourself with the right kind of people the people that can motivate you but also can build you up and make sure that they're that you're going the right way the way that you said that you wanted to go is definitely a great aspect to have yeah that's a really really good answer your surroundings matter a lot and what i really love about the answer is you know the right group of people aren't the ones with straight a's or whatever Mm -hmm. (laughs) or whatever right um it's the group of people that you vibe with because Mm. i personally believe that everyone has a unique skill set right and that skill set may not be school that skill set could be something else but it's all, you want to work with someone who has a different strength than you. Right? For sure. Because you all have the same strength, then th- that means you all pretty much have the same weakness. And what happens to that? You're not very, not very well-rounded to deal with any sort of situation. Exactly. Right? So very, very impressive answer, Michelle. Thank you for that. And Jing, what about yourself? I- um, I think the biggest key to success is probably um, to really find something that you're passionate about and don't give up on it. I think that, you know, we've had kind of road bumps along the way of having to recreate our product and things like that. But I think we've had this central idea of wanting to, you know, be sustainable. And I think even though we've ha- had to go back to the drawing board, like we've been able to keep that like central mission kind of. And I think that's kind of the most important thing. If you want to be successful, you have to really figure out like what's your goal or what you're trying to do and even if the journey turns out to be different like you still have the same end goal that you want to succeed at 
absolutely agree. Having a vision of where you're going is extremely important. But there's one more thing I want to add too. It's consistency, Mm -hmm. right? You have to do it. You have to put in the work almost every day in order to see results, right? And you're not going to see results tomorrow. You're not going to see results the week after, sometimes even year after. But Mm -hmm. you will eventually see results if you don't give up and you keep going and going and going, right? Yeah. Something our mentor said is, um, uh, Tanya had said, you know, this whole company journey, it's not like a sprint. It's like a marathon. So that kind of puts things into perspective when you take like victories. Because at the beginning, we participate in these like competitions, like pitch competitions. And at the beginning, I will say it was rough. We were trying to figure it everything out and we kept taking hits. And when she said that to me, I was kind of putting into perspective, like, oh yeah, we're going to get there one day. We just got to learn and learn and learn. And eventually, you know, mm-hmm. we started winning. So <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it's the same way in the real world, right? You're going to go out there, you're going to build your company and you may be losing to your competitors right off the bat. Oh yeah. Right? <laughs> But, but things can happen within 20 years, 30 years. You have to think very long term, mm-hmm. right? And I don't want to throw in brands <laughs> with this, but one of, my, one of my favorite books is like Shoe Dog, right? Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. So he talks about his Nike story. And it's crazy because inside the book, this is like probably like 1940s, 50s, 60s. But mm-hmm. there's a chapter where he said that we want to be like Adidas, and they're like the giant that we're taking on. But like nowadays, you look at it, we're like, wow, like Nike is arguably bigger than Adidas, right? right? And yeah. it's crazy because things have fluctuate so quickly over time as long as you don't give up and you keep innovating and you keep working at it. So I really appreciate both your answers a lot. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing, like to find something you're passionate about so that you don't give up because I think that goes with anything you do in your life, especially as high schoolers, you know, a lot of people like do extracurriculars just for the college app, but they're not actually passionate about it. And I feel like it shows because like if it doesn't go the way they think, they give up pretty easily versus if you're really into it and passionate, you'll never give up even if like it starts off rough. Yeah, absolutely agree. And regarding the topic of college, have you two thought of where you guys want to go to college in a couple of years? Oh, no, it's the college question. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to go Michelle about it? Um, to be entirely honest, I know what I'm passionate about. Not really sure about the place that I'm going to go. But I think wherever I end up, however I end up there, I think I'm going to enjoy the path as long as I can pursue that passion. Yeah. I think for me, um, I've thought a lot about kind of pursuing maybe business and then also maybe something about medicine or international relations. And I thought about the East Coast a lot just because, you know, there's a lot of like kind of industries there and things like that and it's kind of like especially in New York it's where everything's happening Um, but I definitely think I haven't really settled on anything and like Michelle said I kind of think that wherever I end up I'll make the best out of it Um, but I just want to pursue keeping doing what I love and then kind of figure out where I want to do that yeah those are uh, those are good answers as well you know it's still you're still in your junior year I don't want to add in too much pressure it's still one of your SATs (laughs) college asked and then by the time i ask you guys next year okay now i'm going to this school because i want to go to this school <laughs> so we're definitely even follow then, even then if you catch us in the middle of college applications we're just going to be drowning in those essays writing wow. them writing them not really sure where we're submitting to <laughs> well i wish you guys the best of luck with your college applications thank you um and i kind of want to hear about how you view your future and again a very very hard question and you know i, I know when i was younger i used to hate this question what do you want to do when you grow up? I don't know, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I the, going back to your answer earlier, Michelle, like you want to pursue a place where you can continue your passions. Mm-hmm. What is that passion and how do you define passion? I think um, to answer that first question, my passion is I do want to end up working kind of in the business field. I was going more towards like the kind of finance route, you know, kind of maybe being a financial analyst. If I go really big, maybe like a consultant of some sort. And one of my biggest passions or what I define as a passion is just seeing something that you're interested in and then seeing like what's behind it. I was kind of really interested in stocks and I took a course in high school. I got kind of into the science, not the the science, 
quotation marks behind it. And it just really interested me to the point where I was like, no, I may not be, I may not have had any real experience with it as I have with a business, but I do want to see more of this in the future. Something that you see yourself doing in the future, but also seeing like, this is not something that'll ever bore me. This is not something that I'll ever feel as like a, like a job. This is something that's more like an interest, more like something that'll take me further than where I am now. And so I'm hoping that in the future, I'll be able to pursue more of the finance route and um, stocks. Absolutely. What about you, Jing? I think I'm still figuring it out. I feel like I have like a lot of interest. Like I'm very interested in medicine and business relations, um, as well as kind of the international political scene. Um, but I think I kind of want to go into entrepreneurship and maybe starting up something. But I feel like it's kind of a blurry thing because business is such a vast field. And I feel like maybe as I grow up and I enter the real world, I'll see a problem and I'll be like, I want to start a company to solve that. Um, but for now, I'm thinking maybe working like in administration in a hospital, or maybe venturing into more of the international relations scene. But I've always had this kind of dream of being an entrepreneur but I feel like that's something that has to work itself out if I see an opportunity for that to happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, again, like I said earlier, this is a hard question, right? <laughs> because that's a question I used to hate when I was growing up too. And you know, the crazy thing in my own personal opinion is that when I was younger, I did have a lot of, I did have a lot of interest, right? For example, mm -hmm. my college major was business, engineering, mm -hmm. and pre-med. Wow. Right. You're tackling the big three. Oh because my. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I always hated that question. Right. But the crazy thing is when whenever you guys start to start your own venture one day, you would mm. draw upon each of these experiences at different times. Right. For example, as I'm starting my startup, I use what I thought I learned in business <laughs> uh, to incorporate my engineering side, which is I've been hiring more engineers. And when they give me deadlines, I know exactly that's not, that's not, that's not the right deadline, <laughs> you know, and you get to reorganize your schedule better. Right. Mm -hmm. And as weird as it sounds, when I was pre-med, I learned about how health insurance works. So when we became an entrepreneur and you have to buy your own health insurance, I'm like, oh, I kind of understand what I need to buy for myself. Right. And mm -hmm. you may think that you have to have things figured out right now and you have to focus on one thing. But the crazy thing is like, in life, you're going to draw upon all these experiences that you learn, good and bad, to help you grow as a person. Mm -hmm. So my advice is don't be afraid to be like, I have a lot of interests, right? Because mm -hmm. we're, as human beings, they're so multifaceted that we're, we can be good at a lot of things at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's not this mentality that you have to be good at one thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. that's, that's my mentality. So I do have uh, a final question for you guys. And that mm -hmm. question is, what advice do you have for other high schoolers who are high school juniors who want to get into this entrepreneur program and serve as co-CEOs in a high school startup? Mm, Jane, do you want to take this one first? Sure. So I think that to be um, junior achievement is kind of this worldwide, even global um, business kind of program. And so I think that if you contact and then you can like get in get in contact with your local mentor like Tanya is our local mentor and uh, they can help you start up there and kind of grow and I feel like it's just something that you kind of have to grow on your own obviously from the start we've had a lot of uh, you know kind of bumps around the road coming up as a teenage uh, teenagers I feel like a lot of people at first didn't really take us seriously and obviously you have to find the target market for your product and things like that and there's a lot of components you have to consider but I feel like if you really believe leave in business along the way that you'll be really able to grow with people and I feel like what Michelle said previously it's really important that you find a team you know we're co-CEOs but we obviously have other work people working with us like a head of sales marketing finance or capitalization and together we help carry each other along the way even when we're feeling down and I feel like it's really important to find that team to support you no matter what and to really have a mission kind of think of what you want your business to be and outside of being junior achievement in general even if you can't get involved um, you can get your own things started maybe kind of look for other business things in your school in your community and kind of even on your own you can try to talk to people who are in the business field and really follow your passion like there might not be a linear way I feel like every people 
have their own journeys. But even if you just have a little step along the way, you can begin your business journey and kind of just pursue that passion from there. Love it. Michelle? Um, one thing I wanted to say, I, um, Jim brought up a lot of great points. Um, personally, for me, something that I think was relevant to us that I wish other people knew as well so that it's like a hurdle that they can get past is that uh, it's okay to kind of struggle even as you are the leader. Like when you're a CEO, people kind of look to you for solutions. People kind of look to you to be the person making the choices, having the final say. So therefore it feels like a lot of responsibilities on your chest, a lot of responsibilities on your shoulders to make the right call. And sometimes you don't. Sometimes maybe somebody else's suggestion was a little bit better or maybe sometimes um, it just wasn't the right timing or anything kind of like that that makes success feel a little bit bittersweet. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think that as CEO and as somebody trying to start their own thing, it's okay to have failures along the way. It's okay to embrace that, especially like maybe for us, I don't know if it's a little bit, I think everyone maybe in a high school scenario has to have dealt with this before but that feeling like when you're in junior year and you feel like every choice that you make towards extracurriculars towards assignments tests taking like SAT ACT all these things like you feel if you make the wrong choice it's going to majorly impact your future and that's not precisely true it's okay to make mistakes it's okay to retake that test it's okay to accept the B the C the F it's okay to not be able to communicate or not communicate initially just as long as you learn from those mistakes you take them in stride and you're able to move past them that's the key thing to really keep in mind throughout the your entire journey whether it's business related or not yeah I think definitely as Asians too I feel like this is like mentality you always have to get a and I feel like um it's important to kind of have your first failure because I feel like from then you know like where you've hit bottom and then you can only go up from there because I feel like it's important to be able to recognize that you know sometimes things will not go as well as you think they will even in general but you just have to stick through it and if it's something that you're really dedicated to you if you put in the work it will pay off in the long term but it's just important to acknowledge that you know things don't get done in a day and that you just have to be in it for the long term and to be really passionate about it yeah i I really appreciate both your answers today and again i wish that you guys re-listen re-listen to this podcast one (laughs) before you apply to college and two after college because I hope that the message you have during this podcast will never change, right? What you say mm-hmm. is great. And I hope that and if it does change, it will continue to evolve because you guys are becoming more, more and more experienced along your journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much. This was a really enlightening podcast. Of course. <laughs> and thank you guys so much for helping the podcast. So one more question. So how can our listeners reach out and email you guys online if they have any questions? Um, so our email is uh, simplyco20 at gmail.com. But our uh, probably the easiest way to reach out to us is via our Instagram at the Simply Company. That's the best way to reach out to us. And if they have any questions or want to talk to us more about our entrepreneurship journey. Awesome. We have a website. It's um, www.simplyco.store and they can check us out there. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for being on the podcast today. I love your answers and I can't wait to check in with you guys in a couple of years. Okay, thank, thank you so much for inviting us today. We really appreciate your time. Of course. Thanks so much. You're really inspirational.